<laughs> Morning guys, an early, early start today. Um, heading to Mongena area of uh, the Denikeng Game Reserve. Today we're going to be doing a black rhino horn implant. It's going to be quite the adventure. Things get quite hectic quite quickly, and uh, but it's good fun. Fatra Rabbit Delta Rally, runway 11, the departure left and up. All right, so we're looking for a black rhino cow calf combo. It's quite an operation doing this whole rhino implant. For now, my job is to go up in the air and go looking for the black rhino. Yeah, I've got a rhino here. And it's got a calf. Okay, mark it. Got it. That wasn't very hard. <laughs> to go home for some coffee now. All right, so we've come back from spotting the rhino um, from the plane and now the ground crew is heading out in the direction of where the rhino was spotted. Once uh, the rhino has been darted, we'll be alerted and then we can move in when it's safe. So here's the implant, which basically they drill a hole in the bottom, the base of the horn, and then that feeds in there and then they drill a hole right through the horn and then they'll put epoxy there. Very smart. Rhino horn implanting and dehorning are they're the two accepted approaches that conservationists use to better protect rhino. Tracking devices help monitor and protect the animals, whilst the horning involves removing the horn to make them less attractive to the poachers. Denner King has chosen the implant method because there's a lot of research coming out to show that the dehorning can cause physical and behavioral changes in the rhinos, uh, potentially affecting their natural behaviors like defending themselves or even establishing dominance. So my foundation, the Kevin Richardson Foundation, has got involved with the reserve. Obviously being in the reserve, having the sanctuary in the reserve, we. We felt that we should get more involved in the conservation initiatives and that's why we're here today really to uh, document it a bit and then show people what we do. So things will get really hectic really quickly once the rhino is on the road. They're trying to move it, chop or try and push it towards the road or towards a clearing so it's easier for the guys to get in there. Yeah, so obviously the question comes up is why is the Lion Whisperer um, and his foundation getting involved with protecting a rhino? And uh, the simple answer is if we protect the, the habitats in which these animals exist, then lions are going to be protected as a result. So, you know, they go hand in hand. You can't want extract one from the other. And uh, that's why I think all conservation is intertwined and we need to, it's part of the mandate of, of the foundation is to uh, preserve the habitat, protect habitat and acquire habitat so that all animals can thrive, not just uh, lion.
And that's what they're after. Yeah. So the procedure went really, really well. We managed to put one horn implant in. Done and dusted, I'm gonna to head to the sanctuary now. Um, there's a few lines to check on, uh, specifically Bongani. So, just checking up on Bongani and uh, Suja. Bongani, He's now 19. Come here, my boy. He's a bit uh, grumpy because he is sore. Come here. He learned. No, he's very grumpy. So he's very sore on his hind quarters because he is suffering from spondylosis. So he likes a little bit of catnip. Catnipy. Yeah, my boy. Yeah. Shame. So this part of his spine is starting to fuse and uh, it, it, it really causes severe pain which he's on meds for but he's had such muscle wasting here by the hips and on the hamstrings that it's causing him to actually walk pretty flat-footed so yeah he needs to be monitored quite closely and especially his pain the same age these two lines which is quite surprising because suja doesn't really have any problems um hey don't be like that it's really sad to see them you know, get old like this. Uh, but it brings me to the next thing, which is where is the sanctuary, where's the sanctuary going from here? And uh, obviously once all the, the cats in my care uh, pass, um, we will use the opportunity to uh, move, close that chapter and move into the next chapter, which is uh, the rehabilitation of, of wild animals. He's a mob boy. With the success of the Miracle 8 uh, cheetah cubs that we, we raised from, really from tiny, um, to be released back into the wild, which we did, um, you know, that obviously gave us more confidence in the sense that this was a good direction to take. And it would be a pity not to use these camps for something beneficial. And uh, hence why the foundation has decided to utilize my expertise and background in uh, and the knowledge of, of the big cats and, and the predators and utilize that together with the good infrastructure to offer up our facilities as a rehabilitation place for uh, potential candidates. So that is a, an exciting new chapter. Okay, I'm gonna leave them because you don't wanna irritate the old men too much. Hi, Gina. I've never seen your tum-tum so big. I've never seen your tummy so big, yes. <laughs> Why'd you bite me? <laughs> yeah, lick. Licking's better. Not biting. I don't bite down. No, 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 no. Are you smiling? Hey, smile for the camera. So one of the aims of the foundation is to empower and educate. And uh, by that I mean on the fringes of, of these game reserves, there's always impoverished people and kids that have never had any reason to want to love or protect uh, the animals that are basically living on, on their boundaries. And at the foundation, one of our aims really is to uh, bring the kids to the reserve, uh, show them animals in the wild, but then also bring them to uh, the sanctuary and show them another side uh, to hyenas so that they go away and actually say, well, I didn't know hyenas were, were actually quite cool animals. And hopefully those kids can then go home and educate their parents and their grandparents and their siblings and their friends as to why protecting spotted hyena and the environment um, is so important. Oh, yes. 
This is the best ever, eh? Ooh, make you all static. Yeah, oh yeah, yes. Is that the spot? <laughs> oh, you funny animals, you. Who the funny, funny, funny? Bye bye, my darling. Hello, boys. Oh. Hey, the weather's a lot better today, hey? Hello, my boy. Hello, my boy. Hello, my boy. These are my boy. <laughs> George is an example of, of um, lion kind of abuse. Uh, when he was a cub, he was fed a watered down diet and it caused all sorts of metabolic bone problems. It caused cataracts on his eyes. Um, he still and will never recover from uh, the problems he suffers with his, his hindquarters here. Um, almost like Bongani's in a way, and he is only 10 years old. So this is a direct result of um, problems to do with the captive industry. And so with so many lions uh, here in South Africa, over 12,000, there's estimates of over 12,000 lions in desperate needs, needs of homes, I don't want to um, have more Georges in cages. So a lot of people ask the question, they say, well, okay, if you have an aging population of lions, then why don't you get, um, you know, some young lions in or some orphaned lions or lions that people don't want anymore? There's so many around the world, you know. And for me, these two are pretty much the reason why I realized a while back that uh, bringing lions from other countries all around the world back to South Africa and putting them in camps uh, where they aren't really free is, is not what I want to be doing. As I've said, we want to start venturing out into the world of rehabilitation. Seeing animals um, rehabilitated and released back into the wild where they can, you know, take their chances. Um, then it's up to them. Yeah, even despite your, your condition, you're still a energetic cat, eh? All right, it's time to say goodbye. Goodbye, folks. Till next time.